Here is your Fibos. Now we're gonna let me see the hourly. Mm. We have been steadily going up and uh, nobody likes the upset anymore and it's a little bit boring, but what can you do? It is what it is. Okay. We're going to have this as support here, this line. It's an upwards high connection now. Let's see this low connection. Yes, it was a little bit boring to trade. Nothing was happening really. Mm. Went to this low connection yesterday, more or less. When the SP is holding low connections, it's ultra boring. I saw um, Orthodox Easter is also over as well. Um, honestly, nothing has changed since last Tuesday. Um, but we were, so this is the daily chart. Let me take out the hourly. So, first people is 79 in the hourly. And let me see yesterday what was the level I was trying to sell. Uh, No, have it in one minute, five minutes. So first people is 79. And the previous high is in the hourly 89. Let's just put it here. Now last um <laughs> Look how small the candles are. Uh, last Tuesday, Friday, yeah, so that was last Tuesday, an uninteresting day. I think I told you last Tuesday not, not to trade. Look at last Tuesday, yeah. This is last Tuesday, this small, <laughs> this small candle here. Now, gentlemen, the more we go up, the more boring trading is going to be. You can't really fight it. You can't go angry with it. It is what it is. Only markets decide when we're going to have volatility or not. And right now, with the VIX being up 19, forget it. You have to do like one trade per day, probably even none. Um, the bonds have been slightly going downwards which means higher rates, but until it breaks this point, I don't think. Uh, as long as we stay within the range, it's not important for the equities. Only if we break here, we might see some acceleration, probably the downside in the equities, but until then, uh, we are in a wait and see mode. We're wait and see mode. I understand that most of you must be finding it difficult, but 
uh, even if you were trading your own account you wouldn't be trading so Euro dollar uh, is uh, what surprises me. It's, it has been um, so. Look at the daily euro dollar. <clears throat> so, so this uh, this high made just a few ticks higher from the second of February high, and failed for now. This is the daily candle of the euro dollar. Um, And the last two days we have been heading down, but equities have been heading upwards. So go figure. Who did they take the FIBOs from? So we have two sets of FIBOs. We have the hourly FIBO, which you have to take it from yesterday's low to today's high. And you can also take in five minutes from, let me see, is that there? Yeah, that's the last significant low in five minutes and 72, 72. So we have the bigger uh, term FIBOs and the short term FIBOs. These are here in the five minutes, the short term FIBOs. And the first FIBO is coming 88. 0.25 okay and yes this high is 89 okay let's um let's keep an eye on the first people okay refresh yeah i'll be back
All right, I'm going to tell you what is going on in terms of how I'm thinking things are playing out. Yeah, so that is an opinion. And that is something people don't really discuss. No, in the last 10 years, we have had so much money being printed. Yeah, so all this money was invested in, in, into equities pretty much because of low rates. Yeah, now that the rates are pretty high, yeah, and everyone is talking about the word recession, recession, recession. So hedge funds are not stupid. Yeah, they have to hedge this thing. So let's say if they buy equities, they have to buy put options. So <laughs> the guys that are selling options, yeah, since everybody thinks there's going to be a recession, everybody has bought protection. They don't care. They just they're going to pay the premium to buy protection. But the guys that are selling protection, yeah, they have to buy the underlying instrument for their protection as well. Yeah, so there is so much protection being bought, and the guys that are selling protection, they're buying the equities up. Yeah, there is, <laughs> and nobody is actually selling. So. Um, the sellers of options, uh, they're pretty much buying equities to hedge their own investments. And we are going up. Nothing has broken, told you. Yeah, recession. Recession, my ass. Do your own research. Listen, don't read anything. If you if you read the news outlets the last two years, you will have sold your house as well. But, and that's that's the funny thing about trading. If you had a choice between which way it was gonna go, so if I told you, if you had to choose, if I told you like, um, which would you prefer? Would you prefer, let's say I was the genie from Aladdin, yeah? Would you prefer to tell you where the market was going or would you prefer to tell you when the market is gonna go into its direction? Trust me, you would choose the time. Because think about it, yeah. If something of massive magnitude happens, you will just, I mean, you will not be stupid, you will take the right position. But the timing, everything is about timing in trading. You don't have timing. Let's say if, uh, okay, I'm going to tell you, markets are going to go down, yeah. But I'm not going to tell you when. <laughs> so when shit hits the fan, you're going to know which direction to take. So it's all about the timing and not so much about, obviously we have to do the right thing at the right time, but the timing, the time, timing is of crucial importance. So. This Tuesday, just underway, Goldman Sachs call 3.4% of the open, set to snap a seven day win streak. S&P 500 opens up 0.4%, NASDAQ in the time of 0.7. Let's look at this level. 88.25. 89 was yesterday's uh, hourly actually high. So here we are. In 88.25 is the first people, don't forget, yeah? Here. We are approaching the first people at 88.25. <clears throat> 89 was yesterday's high. Hmm. Here we are. Let's be well.
Let's see if Nasdaq retraces from this level as well. Keeps on stopping at 89 now. to 8825. It's okay if Nasdaq uh, touches here and the traces, uh, 8825 is still going to be okay. Yeah. Mm. Nasdaq is approaching, S&P still holding up. But I don't like that it's holding so close to the level. Nasdaq is tracing and Dow is now taking down. Yeah. I bought it small. I bought it small. I don't really like to trade in the first minutes of uh, opening, but you know, money management. If it goes offside, it's okay. It's... When I don't feel like it, when I'm trading such days, I don't I don't invest too much money. It's an it's a no brainer, yeah. Hmm. Nice stops at eighty nine two times. See the one minute, yeah. Boy, there is nothing trading.
<clears throat> That's more from the Goldman Sachs CEO, says the bank continues to be cautious on the economic outlook. Okay. The only thing I'm afraid is um, is big clips with one clip, boom, five points. The only that's the only thing I'm afraid. That's why I'm trading uh, half size in in those levels. Yesterday as well, we had those boom, five points down again. Yeah. So you have to be very careful with the longs. And sometimes, you know, it goes back to your level 10 times and stuff like this in in, in uh, low volatile environments. And you have to sustain the pain, let's say. Uh, 10 hours, man. So until now, it's textbook long, yeah? Does the FIBO stops at the, uh, then it, it, it stops at the previous high. Now, I don't know, 93.25, I'm exiting and uh, I will take it from there. But the fact that it's holding the first FIBO for in the five minute range, it's very, very bullish. This thing has the potential to break the high now, but when, I don't know. Now, I can take it at four points, but it's a bad habit at all. Either it goes five points or it wasn't a good trade.
Well, if it goes back to my entry level, I'm going to scratch it. I don't want it. I'm not going to trade the market that trades with those volumes. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it's okay. That's a conscious decision. I mean, it's trading in those volumes is okay. Let's, let's go at least. I don't want, I don't want to do too many trades. It's it's destructive. Okay, let's go. Oh, come on. <clears throat> That being said, since the market is stopping for so long at four points profit, yeah, why should I exit? I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna try to let it run. So I'm not gonna exit at 9325 unless it stalls there for too long. Makes no sense. If it breaks here, it should go higher. Because first it goes slowly and then it goes fast, yeah. No oh, man, one tick. Oh. Come on. So I was going to exit at 9.325, but since it's holding for so long here, it might do a fast move all the way up, yeah? So I might hold it a little bit more, yeah? I will tell you if I exit. I, I was going to exit here. I'm not exiting. Let's see if it has... Yeah. yeah. It's shaking. Come on, let's go a little bit higher. Nasdaq is bid. I'm exiting. Fuck, what's going on? 
Okay, IX is 9475. Well, that was a good exit, wasn't it? <laughs> For once, oh, what's this? How can you do this? Let's chill now. Back to the level. I was scary for a second. I mean, I, I put orders to exit and uh, it wasn't responding. Did I actually sell 9475? No, I sold 9450. Ah, that's okay. That's the second best. Oh, <laughs> oh man. What does he want to do? Now, um, also, this this strategy that I decided, I have seen so many times happening. So if I exit, if I decide to exit here, yeah, and the market stops one point or very close to my level and it consolidates, yeah, and doesn't touch my level, what's the point of exiting, you know, two or three ticks higher if that thing has consolidated for so long and many people went short here, yeah? So these people have to stop and usually creates a bigger move, yeah? So uh, most of the times I was exiting as my strategy, but then, you know, I kind of, you know, break my rules a little bit just in case there's an acceleration to the upside there. Now, I saw there was no volume once we break 94.25, zero volume, yeah, to the upside. Because usually when it breaks a level like here, it wants to go up aggressively, it will, it will do a fast move to the upside, yeah. But no, no volume. Volume defines everything. But again, when you have solo volume, the market is subject to manipulation the whole time, yeah, because they can pretty much do whatever they want. If you think people don't have the capability to manipulate markets, you are very, very wrong. 
they do it especially on low volumes and low volatilities, yeah, because they control it. Big players are not, not, not going to come in in this market, yeah. Don't want to trade the market with those volumes. They go into other products like gold, oil, whatever there is volume. Okay, now we're breaking. the Bank of America CEO here. Is this another trend? Bank of America CEO says everything points to a mild recession and says signs of inflation are tipping down. This could be another invitation here, yeah? It's only the Dow that's sticking down, but... So that's the, um, the, um, the yearly high for the, the NASDAQ, yeah. And still holding here. I don't know if I should buy it again. I mean, with those volumes, usually it rains trades, yeah? You know, trying to scare people out. Let's see if, if it's going to stop this kind of loud, yeah? Dow keeps on ticking down. Eighty-five, twenty-five is the fifty percent, yeah, and he holds the first few. But let's see, because it looks like Nasdaq wants to touch this line here. Yeah, here's the fifty percent FIBO. and don't forget seventy-nine. Uh, is actually the first FIBO in the. I'm definitely gonna go long here. Yeah, seventy-nine. As China to conduct military exercises in the sea area near Guangdong. Was this military exercises? Of China, yeah, okay. And the seventy, and the seventy-eight percent is seventy seven fifty, and the first people in the hourly is seventy nine, yeah. So here's the people in the hourly seventy nine. Ambassador said there is no movement on the Black Sea grain deal, according to TASS. Hmm. Interesting. Well, 10,000 clip, look what it does. What else do you want to do? What do you want to do?
he broke the 50% immediately. Yeah? So you get it, yeah? We have a smaller range fibus, so the smaller range fibus are from here to here, and the bigger range fibus are from here to here. The first fibus is 79, yeah? So look how, how my thought process go. The first FIBO is 79, but the 78% FIBO of this range, which I find it, you know, it's a little bit fine tuning of the trade. It looks like 100% I'm going to go here and I'm going to think about 79 if it goes down 79, which is a very good level, to be honest, because you have this hourly high as well. Yes, this high at 80, 50 is the first FIBO and uh, 79.25. If I have it, it was a previous level. What was 79.25? Um, so the daily level is the Nowlin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's wait and see. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, prior to the pandemic, um, the market was bullish uh, pretty much every day, actually. But here's the thing, yeah, the markets at uh, the morning session, so like here, yeah, what's that? The market was where well, the markets in the morning session were first going down, and during the evening session, the night session, which is untradeable, if you ask me, they were going up. So it pretty much resembles those moves, yeah. You know, where the market was bullish, everyone was bullish, but in the morning session, every single day the market was going down, and then it was going up in the afternoon, yeah. It was very difficult to trade. All right, keep an eye on here. I'm going to go along yeah, 7750. Which I don't know if it's the correct trade, but it's worth a try. Usually, I wait when there is when it's going aggressive down. Usually, I wait to see what does what, what's the maximum the market like, not the maximum, how the market behaves. Yeah. And then I enter. So I don't have a bid in. I wait to take out the bid and see what happens after that. But you know, when there is low volumes, I think it's okay. And we're going there, there very aggressively. Yeah, 79. Uh, don't forget, 79 is the first people in the hourly. Yeah, just picked. Come on, go a little bit lower. I mean, you could definitely, you don't have to do the trades that I do. Yeah, you can definitely go in and buy the 79 if you feel like it. It's a level and just fine tuning it, fine tuning, fine tuning it. I mean, it could hold. But it's too obvious, isn't it? Go a little lower. And Nasdaq, yeah, has to go if he wants to retrace, has to uh, the retrace, uh, almost a trace. Oh. Oh fuck. Well, that was a sudden move. Shit. 
Now that's the problem with the, with those moves today. You see one lag clip and it kills you. Avoid just citing sources. EU source says. EU okay, we're still we're still in the trade. EU source saying that the EU agrees on chip subsidies plan. Back to seven seven fifty. Okay, we're still in. Well, that was a big clip. 20,000 clip, my man. Ah, uh, four point stop from 7750, yeah. So, uh, 7350. Here is your stop. It's all good in the hood. Ah, uh, man, let's go. What did I tell you? Sudden moves, killers, they're killers. And 79s will have been stopped with a 79, four points is 75. Not for two ticks, you won't have it stopped with the first people. But here we are, gentlemen, long here. Let's get another five points. Don't go back. Why are you going back? I'm gonna go in full size. I'm gonna average on I mean I'm gonna go actually full size on this. Here it is again. I come and give me the fucking contract. No, this is I wasn't filled in the second part. People seventy seven fifty, where it stops after the panic, seventy seven fifty. Trusted levels. I mean have a strategy around levels. I'm gonna go. Don't go back. Uh, it's okay if it stops at 79, yeah? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, it stopped at 79. So now it stops at the first people. Keep in mind, at 79, if you got in with a five points, with a four point stop, 75 uh, is your stop, yeah? So you're still safe, all I'm trying to say, even if you bought 79. Yeah? With a four point stop, four point stop. Now it stops at the first week, okay. Ah, oh, man. What's this low here? Actually, one tick higher from this low is our exit.
Why are you doing this? Uh, so an update on the Black Sea grain deal. Uh, Russian UN envoy says Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov will discuss Ukraine Black Sea export deal with UN Secretary General in New York uh, in a meeting next week. <laughs> About seventy nine. That is no good. Back to my entry level. It's painful. I mean, I was three ticks from my exit, yeah, but I didn't exit. Again, if it doesn't go five points for me, it's not a successful trade anyway. Either I scratch it or I take a loss. Who does not that want to go, man? That's why I like higher volatilities. High volatilities, they don't kid around, they just go, yeah. Just scary for more, 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 most people, not for me. These markets, I hate it. This, these markets, I fucking hate them. Slow, bullshit, you know, they, okay, I'm still safe, no? I'm going to buy some more at 79. Here, if it ties in this line, I'm buying some more. Oh, come on. Please keep in mind that I'm, I'm trying to average on side, not off side. Yeah.
I bought some 79 as well. Mm. Yeah, I have now I have to exit some at eighty two fifty, and the rest I'm going to exit at eighty four. What's this guy here? 8175, isn't it? Yeah. Struggling to go up. But again, I told you, they do this kind of bullshit intraday and they create the false down move, false in quotes, yeah? Where it doesn't really go anywhere, it's pretty much the range trades, but with the one big red candle, and then it goes up uh, in the evening session.
Come on. Thousand. Look at the volumes. How fucking ridiculous they are. How can you trade this with those volumes? That we have to, we need the patience of a donkey. We say in Greece, the patience of a donkey. Supposedly, donkeys are patient animals. How do you do those uh, emoticons? Come and break the fucking reins. Fucking Mazdaq. Uh, I'm starting not to feel very good about my 79. If it goes back to 79 again, I'm going to take it out. I'm going to take out half of the position that is at the entry. It's taking too long and the volumes are too low. What if another candle like with this volume comes in? I'm fucked. Better safe than sorry. What is the Nasdaq doing for fuck's sake? It feels like nobody's uh, nobody's interested to to push it up yet. It's wait. Okay. Again, uh, <laughs> from the 7750s, I'm going to exit 8250, and the rest of the 79s at 84. If I don't stop my 79s before that. Nasdaq breaks. I'm taking out the seventy nines. I took one tick stop. I'm back to 7750, yeah. What is this? What's going on? Oh, I'm stopping out. What did I tell you? Mark is just too dangerous up here. Fuck, where did I stop? Γαμώ το μονή της μάνα σου γαμώ. Σεβεντιφόρ. Ε, μου. Τουφ, at least I got the 79's out. So I made five and lost three. No, I didn't make, didn't make five. I made, how much did I make? From 88 to 25. Yeah, I'm still up four points. 
what did I tell you? Uh, uh, that's why the, the, you see low, low, low volumes, one big clip of 15,000. Boom, fucks everyone out. Fucking hell. I told you better safe than sorry. We're now seeing the SMI 500 and NASDAQ index array opening gains. This ain't normal trading, man. 71.75 was the previous level. It must have been in, yeah. So 71.75, I don't remember what 75 was, but 71.75 is, uh, is the high here of the second, of the fourth of April. There's some research coming through from Goldman Sachs now. Goldman Sachs changes their ECB call, now feeds a 3.75% return. Listen, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't really make sense to go long now. Um, with those, it's just, it's way too scary. It's just what, 20,000 clip? What, what's this? I mean, everyone stopped, including me, yeah. But who's gonna go long? Tell me now, who is gonna, who, who nobody's gonna go long. Nobody's gonna go against this guy with 15,000 lots, yeah. That is why you couldn't even break here. Fuck. I mean, technically I'm doing the correct thing. It's just, someone just doesn't care, yeah. So much for the donkey. Let's wait. What did I tell you? Not trading those those markets is a choice, yeah, it's a conscious choice. Plus, if you wanna go short, they didn't give you any entry, yeah? It just did the move, just had to go along with a, uh, Along with it, which is not technical, is it? Just you're going with the flow and that's not trading. Now, this is the uh, this is a Dow level stop yesterday. Let's see if it's gonna stop today. Yeah. The Dow is too weak and, and the Nasdaq is too weak. There's some news coming out of Canada here by Canada's financial regulator it says they're preparing for the possibility that the housing market will experience continued weakness throughout 2023. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 67.25 is a 62%, but do you want to go long? I don't, I don't know when, when it's going to stop. Stop exactly at the 62% people, yeah? This thing, man, man, man. Housing market downturn and interest rate pressure on liquidity. What is the 78%? This is Canadian financial system for 23 and 24. This is someone selling big time, yeah? Canadian financial systems adjustment to high interest rate environment may not be completely smooth says high inflation, potential rise of borrower defaults among issues putting pressure on construction and development. Now, in the low connection with the low connection, I repeat, the low connection with the 78% is coming exactly at the same point, 58.75, and then that is the target, probably. Now, if somebody wants to go along there, it's a decent level. I, I'm not trading this bullshit anymore. I 
I'm going to keep my four points. That was uh, a level for Nasdaq, but I'm telling you there's something going on here. Someone is selling big time. I don't even care if it goes up. It ain't worth it. It's too dangerous for, for no reason. What was the level yesterday that I was trading? I think I was. Yeah, here I was trading. 57.75. I was I was short here. Then I tried to go for like the break. I left the office. The office. I left my desk. I come back and I'm stopped at the at my entry. Didn't even go 10 points, did it? Not even 10 points. But here's the level 57.75, if you're asking me. 57.75. And the 78% FIBO is 58.75. But I might buy 57.75. I'm not going to have a bid in this time. But around this level, around this area, and 57.75, where I have the line, me go long. If it goes in half an hour, if it doesn't go, fuck it. Oof. whole April has been very weird. And then in May, we sell in May and go away. Keeps of stopping now at 67.25, but I don't trust it. I'm again, I repeat, here is my entry level. If it goes in the next half an hour, if it doesn't, We're seeing treasuries extend their advance as US stocks are raised gains. Mm. 
Hmm. By the way, if somebody, um, let's say you bought the 62%, yeah, which is here, 60, 67.25, where it stopped now, yeah, it doesn't even have the power yet to go to give you five points on a move like this, on a bullish market where supposedly on fast moves and downside they should be buying, and they're not. It's a mess here. <clears throat> I don't have a strategy for this kind of sudden moves. Nobody has actually. Nobody knows when he's going to come in and sell 15,000 contracts. But once the market, uh, you see, when I told you I'm going to buy 79s, once, I mean, I guess the other people did it as well, yeah. And that was the pivot level for the break 79s. Boom. Let's take 79s out. Do you have any questions or do you understand what is going on here? And think about it, yeah. The more we go up, the more people are going to start thinking that this is a new bull market and they're going to decide to take off their protection, yeah. So they're going to sell their options. I'm pretty sure once they sell their options and most of the people are unhedged, most of the people. I have to understand that if you buy protection, you give back some money, yeah? That is when the markets are going to go down because the more they buy protection, the more up we go, yeah? This is just markets, they tend to do big moves when nobody's expecting it. If everybody's expecting it, no. Uh, I don't remember a, a single time in my career when everybody was saying we're going to go in this direction and the market went in this direction. Never. Now from here to here, the first people is 77, yeah. It's on the bad sort, considering all the countries have closed well below before the previous lows, yeah. Here we close below. Here we and we haven't retested any of those. So here you are testing the low of 7550, and you could sell 77 with the target of uh with a target of uh, what did I say 57.75 yeah so that's 20 point move by the way the 62 percent would have worked 
or five points at least. Yeah. Yeah, and the DAO is failing in the line. I was a good support, yeah, only yesterday as well. If we go to yesterday, yeah, actually, we hold it here yesterday as well. This market is bid with low volume, but it's no, you don't see any of these guys coming in. 77 should be a good sort, yeah. Ah, you have this low as well here. Okay. Or they cleared everyone out and it's going to go up slowly. But I don't know. There's, there's this probability as well, yeah. Paris, how long does it take to fill 1,500 dollars? Is it instant? Instant, man. Instant. You just, if let's say you have 1,500 contracts, yeah, and I click whatever here, it's, uh, if I click, let's say 78, it's going to take all these offers all the way up to 78. If the offer is not filled, I can do buy market and buy all uh, all contracts, but uh, I would say with 1500 contracts, you know, you might move the market with one point. You have to understand there are too many ghost orders. Ghost orders are the ones that you cannot actually see. You see here 19 contracts, but I'm telling you at least 500 have traded. You just don't see it. It's called ghost orders. So it's not only 100 contracts trading here, it could be like 500. I just, you are unable to see it in your eye. If you go to the audit trail, uh, not audit trail, sorry, buy and sales. What am I talking about? Uh, time and sales, sorry, I said buy and sales. What is it? You're gonna see how many contracts are actually, and do you see all those contracts trading? No, you do not. Look at it. You understand? It's just those contracts we are unable to see. You will just see like one big clip, like a hundred, if it comes in. Or... I said fifteen thousand. That's the volume is here, gentlemen. Fifteen thousand contracts. That was twenty thousand contracts sold. Let's look at seventy-seven again. So one guy comes in and sells, he actually sold in one clip 15,000 contracts, not, 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 not the whole of it, the rest was stops, but it's just one clip, sales market, boom, until he fills all of those. You know, those funds, they don't care about price on it, they just want to get filled. They give the order to the broker and they say, just do the best possible price and boom, he sells market. You know, different trees, different apples. Uh, these guys, they honestly don't do the exactly same thing that we do. We do, they don't, they don't, they don't trade. They don't day trade. It might it could be like a swing position, or it could be like a long term position. Or who knows? Who knows? But man, this market. And I told you, like my cap trading is when the when it's one minute. This is this is the volume. Yeah, I have the line here. I, I have said it in any of my previous webinars. 
uh, when all when all one minute candles are trading in the 10,000 line, we have good trading day. When you see this, this is especially when you see volumes like this, just avoid trading altogether. Who again? What did I tell you here? How do I know one one click doesn't come in and fuck me up? Yeah, and it did. Who is gonna come in and buy now with uh, and that's and that's the mentality they are creating the market makers yeah and it could be that it goes all the way up now like it did yesterday yeah let me bring the hourly yesterday yesterday we were we were fighting me and all the other sorts to bring the market down and then in the evening poop poop uh, adios motherfuckers they they said how do I know and this is this is the derivative of low volatility I'm, uh, they say you wanna trade this market okay come in. I don't want to hear again everybody say oh, because I heard some people when the volatility was high and much oh things are crazy if, if, if you're afraid to, to trade the high volatilities then drop trading altogether go play golf 75 percent turn the rate they say the rationale for the change the ceiling banking tensions strong indicators go play golf if you're afraid of volatility that's where you make money Trading requires confidence and, and you have to believe in yourself and believe in your actions and do it when it comes to the to the point because you know many everyone's saying oh I'm, I'm, I'm let's say the market is 77 yeah and they're gonna say okay I'm buying 71 75 and when the market goes 71 75 they're like eh, should I buy should I not should I buy should I not market goes 71 75 goes to 81 85 then they say oh man I should have bought and they go in and they buy 83 and then they lose money at least do something, have a strategy and stick to your strategy and, and say, I'm going to do it no matter what. Otherwise, what are you doing here? Yeah, the market is the market is merciless. It's, it, the market doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care if you have problems, if you are divorced, if you are sick or whatever. The market is market's going to fuck you up if you show no respect and you don't have a strategy. Yeah, And do it. If you start doing shit like you know most of the people do, I do it as well sometimes. I go angry. And I'm going, oh man, why didn't I buy 71.75? Or why didn't I buy 67.25? Yeah. Well, for example, I did buy 67.25 and it was actually the correct long, let's say, because we haven't given any sort. Uh, do I care I didn't get it? No, I don't care. It was a conscious decision at this point that I didn't want to do any longs. That is why in this in this in this fucking April I'm trading half size it makes no sense to to bet too much money. And you see how careful I was with the 79s. Once I saw the 79s, ah, they are not breaking, yeah. I just so I had full position here of six slots, yeah. And it's just something wasn't right, yeah. And I took the three lots out and I left the other three. And I got stopped at 74 with this candle here. Imagine if I have the 79 as well, that would have been, I would have been negative and painful. And, you know, you carry it the next day and the next day. And I'm going to, I'm saying to myself, fuck it, I'm just going to come in commando when the market picks up again. Yeah. Until then, it's capital preservation. I have done the same mistakes for many years. I cannot do it again. When the volume comes, when the volatility comes, I will trade. When it doesn't, I will just stay idle or very half size or capital preservation. I will keep my money. I didn't bust my fucking ass in March to give my money like this in April in a, in a, in a, in a zero volatility and zero volume market. No, sir, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do the same mistake again. Fuck them. Whenever the volume comes, I mean, until then, potato, potato, I do nothing. I smoke and I go to the gym. Oh, there you go. This is fucking insane, man. Let them do it, uh, let them do it a thousand times, I don't care. It's not trading, this is casino, this is gambling. This is why people are saying, oh, trading is gambling. Of course it's gambling. If you go in and trade this market, it's gambling, yes. How do, who, 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 you don't know when this guy is going to come in. This is gambling. Until this guy stops or, you know, the bulls pick up their seat and do the correct thing, I'm not doing it.
Does it make sense what I'm saying? That wasn't a very big clip, by the way. And five points up immediately. Yeah, I'm pulling my offer as well at 77. It's five o'clock. So I was going to sell here if he went up to five o'clock. After five o'clock, gym time. Oops, again, 6725, by the way, yeah. Honestly, trust me, always do things around levels. Don't don't chase the market and don't be angry with the market. If you miss a level, it's okay. Trade the next day and don't trade at all. Just, just close it. Do not chase, never chase the market. This is, uh, this is irresponsible, undisciplined, and bullshit. Choose your level, choose your stop, choose your profit. And that's it. Five points, yeah? And if you are impatient or, you know, a little bit undisciplined or a bit emotional, as I am, you are doing this for one and a half hour. For one and a half hour, be someone else apart from this self. Be concrete, be disciplined, be careful and be uh, decisive. It always, uh, the trade always looks bad when you get filled and it's at your price, honestly. All right, gentlemen, five cigarettes for today, maybe six and four points up. I'm mentioning the cigarettes for sure, and I'm doing them well. I'm not smoking that much. If you see me smoking like 15 cigarettes, then something is very wrong. And, you know, every time it's quiet, the media, they're trying to, to blame someone. Yeah, some, you know, back in 2018, they were blaming the VIX guys that they were selling VIX and because it had low volatility. And right now, they're blaming the option players. You have this uh, day trading options, zero DT. They're blaming them now for the delta and when they're producing negative delta and positive delta and this bullshit in options. Uh, the truth is there's nothing going on. Nobody knows what to do. Nobody knows what to do. It feels like uh, it feels like we're going into a recession, but nobody's selling, or everybody's buying full protection uh, on their loans. Yeah, and it's just something not ha something has to break, like a country or something like that. Otherwise, uh, the market thinks, yeah, okay, they're gonna cut rates in a while. And I told you the, the market can remain crazy for a very, 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 very long period of time. It can stay like this for another eight months, one year, as far as I know. And you're saying, oh, we have a recession where the market's not moving and this and that, and you no. Know, 
market will decide when it's going to move. Is it this month, next month, one year from now, six months from now? Nobody knows. Again, the same happened with Bear Stearns. Bear Stearns, when Bas, which back in the day in 2008, that was for us was huge. Yeah, a bank to fail was was like it's like worse than Russia and Ukraine right now. Yeah, uh, because the last bank that had failed until then was Barings in the 1900s. Yeah, hundred years prior. So that was huge. The market went down a little bit uh for one month or so and then for another six months it was going up and we were all scratching our heads how how can it happen how can it happen how can it happen <laughs> then Lehman came and then it happened but until then what you are gonna go short But I'll tell you this, um, that I, I give it 0% that the markets are not going to pick up. I never in history rates have been at 5% and markets were so quiet. Never. Never. I find it next to impossible. So with rates being that high, eventually something will break, especially if they keep on hiking, which they should. Inflation, I don't see any, 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 anything going down. It's the same as it is. I don't know how, how they derive lower inflation. It's Maybe in USA, some, some products, but here in Europe, everything, you can confirm it as well. Everything is massive. Nothing has changed since last year in terms of prices. What I was paying last year, I still pay now. I'm pretty sure you do as well, especially in Germany. But can the high rates? No. They cannot high rates too much. Now you see banks doing this uh, two-year period where they're going to keep a fixed rate for some customers. This is insane. So they're hiking rates, but the banks are keeping low interest rates for home buyers for a grace period, they say. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable what's going in the shadow. So they're hiking rates, but it's not translating to higher rates for homeowners. This, this, this blows my mind. So what the banks want to do, uh, they want to get more money with more deposits and they want to keep on lending. Then you have credit expansion, yeah, and the equity markets go up. And it's exactly the opposite of what the Fed and the ECB want to do. They want to do a credit, a credit currency, yeah? not, not the credit expansion at this time only. It's just honestly, uh, people on different job sectors, uh, they're buying houses like crazy. It's like the, the next best thing. Yeah? Everybody thinks they're going to become rich by buying houses. And a few people have in the last five to seven years that the bank started lending. Yeah? But this cannot go forever. I mean, the rents are going to keep increasing and uh, prices, house prices are going to keep increasing. and. Again, until stuff it breaks. I'm guessing when people are going to start revolutionizing and you know go out in the streets and like they do in France. Uh, I will see you uh, next Tuesday. If you don't have any other question, I'm off.